eight minutes past seven. Good morning. Now, there are calls for a better understanding of a condition affecting one in every 140 children called selective mutism. It's an anxiety condition which is often dismissed as just shyness. Our reporter, Michelle Cross, went to meet Charlie and his parents, Laura and Andy. Have a listen to this. It, it was when Charlie was around three. Um, I picked him up from nursery one day and uh, we just, as you would with a child, we sort of said to his um, teacher, say goodbye to the teacher, and um, he didn't say anything. And the teacher said, do you know what, he's never ever said anything to me, which I found quite alarming, obviously. Charlie's dad, Andy, says that was the moment everything changed for the seven-year-old and his family. Here's Charlie's mum, Laura. My initial thought was that he was just shy and that it was he would just grow out of it. You don't necessarily want to believe it at first, but the more we found out, it was literally describing Charlie. Um, and so it was, we, couldn't, we couldn't ignore it. It affects one in 140 children. That's around one in every primary school, which came as a shock to his parents. Growing up, Charlie was very happy. First word was bird. Remember that? <laughs> what? I am a one pink and green. He met all his milestones when he should have done. Notably, a really sort of cheeky sense of humour and, and, and something that... You know, he's, he still has today, obviously. The pressure of um, saying good morning to his teacher, he really struggles with that. How did that make you feel as parents? We used to feel that we'd have to speak up for him because um, it, it can come across as him being rude. We are talking to him about it more. He is more aware of it. And, you know, we asked him, how does it feel to have selective mutism? And he says he feels lonely, he feels left out. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. The condition has been an emotional journey for all of them. It's hard not to think about, um, you know, what the future holds for him. Because again, it's such a given that, that everybody's expected to speak. It's taking the small wins and, and, and running with those. Um, and building on them, that he can show everybody who he really is. <laughs> I look too good. <laughs> Let's talk now to Lucy Nathanson, a therapist and a specialist in selective mutism. Lucy, welcome to the show. Hi, Alan. Now, Lucy, I'm going to ask you some questions, and no matter how I wrap this up, they may seem a bit lowbrow for you, but um, I really want to understand this, but I can't quite get my head into the mind of, of the child. So could you explain a bit more from your expertise as to what is happening for the child that allows them to feel lonely but also not speak? Absolutely. So, selective mutism is an anxiety disorder and what this means is that these children can talk absolutely perfectly when they're comfortable. So, in the home environment with immediate family, they can talk freely. They're often the loudest child in the house, but in other situations, for example at school or sometimes even with extended family members or with strangers, they freeze. So, it's been compared to a phobia of talking. So just like any phobia, when we're, we're faced with our phobia, we respond to that in a very physical way. So our, we go into the fight, flight, freeze response ultimately. So our heart rate may increase, we may start sweating, our muscles tense up. And these children with selective mutism have this very involuntary response to the expectation to talk. And crucially, their throat muscles tense up and they are unable to talk in those situations. And it's not long before they become, in inverted commas, the person who doesn't talk. It becomes part of their identity and it feels impossible for them to start talking. What is the treatment plan for children with this condition? <laughs> So the first step is for everyone around the child to understand that this is anxiety-based. So 
Education is crucial. So family members and school staff, everyone who comes into contact with the child and understanding that the child is not choosing this, they're not being stubborn or rude by not talking, it's it's anxiety preventing them from talking. And once we all understand that, then it's important that we create this pressure-free environment for the child. We really want the child to feel as though it doesn't matter if they don't talk right now. There are lots of ways they can participate without using their voice right now. So everyone around the child needs to create this pressure-free environment. And this will help the child to start to feel at ease. And crucially, their throat muscles will start to relax with time. And then they're in a far stronger position to make those steps forward. And, and, and so Lucy, what's your... Uh, and th this is a rather intrusive question, so you can use a broad brushstroke here, but what's your success rate, if that's the right word, with seeing children go into treatment, like for any anxiety condition, um, and seeing them actually start to make progress and feel that they can interact with society outside of the home? What sort of success rate do you have with therapeutic treatments? The success rate is actually really high. So if children are given appropriate intervention as early as possible, they can absolutely overcome selective mutism. We see it happen on a daily basis, provided they get the right support, um, children can make steps forward and start to talk. Uh, intriguing. Um, I'd like to talk about this again. I think it's a multi-layered issue and it's a real challenge, isn't it, for adults to get their ha head around that it's an anxiety condition uh, and that we'll need treatment just like any other anxiety condition, condition that is overwhelming for a child. Uh, fascinating to talk to you this morning, Lucy. That's Lucy Nathanson there, child therapist specialising in selective mutism. Uh, it affects, the, I thought that number was reasonably high, one high, one in every 140 children. So if you've got experience of this, in your family, perhaps you had it yourself, anything along those lines, I'd love to hear from you. Do ping me a message, WhatsApp 08000 321 333. Start your message with the word Solent and include your name and where you're from.